Uh oh. We'll start with this. Just big in Japan, Naoya Inoue says no, he's the world's best boxer. He's getting some pushback in America, but that was expected. Over 55,000 fans flocked to the Tokyo Dome, the fabled baseball stadium, for the first boxing match in the arena since 1990, when Buster Douglas knocked out Mike Tyson. A $20 million gate is expected. This article was published the day before Monday's fight. For Inui versus Neri, and both fighters will be breaking the bank handsomely. As Inui's promoter in America, Bob Arum, stated so eloquently, Inui opponents have their tongues wagging out for an invitation because the purses are so prolific. They're willing to go to Japan. Which begs the question, if they are, and the money's so good out there, what opponent is drawing so well that Inui should come here? Of course, if I fight in the United States, I would get more recognition and I could become one of the faces of boxing, Inui told BoxingScene.com through a translator during a video conference call. As I continue fighting, we'll see how it goes. It depends on the condition. Right now for the lower weight classes, Japan is a big stage for us. If there was a condition in the United States that allowed me to be evaluated better, that would be a consideration. The problem. The Americans don't know shit about boxing. They know shit about tribalism and bigotry, xenophobia. But evaluating a boxer, especially a foreign one, they had a hard enough time evaluating Spence versus Crawford. They like the alcoholic that flips Ferraris a lot more than they like Terrence Crawford. But in the end, who won? Terrence Crawford. And you think you're going to get a fair evaluation from these people when they don't give their own fighters a fair evaluation? The way I see it. There is not a big enough name here in America at either 122 pounds or 126 that should draw Inui out of his native Japan where he puts up monster numbers. For what? As many times as I see people saying online that he needs to come to America, that's about as many times as I'm going to say it here. Say it now. No, he doesn't. Listen, 55,000 people in the yeah. Tokyo Dome for a 122 pounder. Yeah. That is out of this world. So I'm going to argue that he doesn't have to come to the States. He brought 55,000 people into the Tokyo Dome, and he had the rest of the world watching him in the morning, and these off times on a Monday. Yeah. So I don't know, man. I think the star power of this guy is something else. Even his ring walk, he's got a rocking, rock star guitar player getting everybody jacked up. Uh, this this guy entertains. At least somebody in America gets it. At least somebody understands former kickboxing and boxing world champion Chris Algieri. 55,000 people in a baseball stadium is no small feat. Least of all to see a super bantamweight contest. Super bantamweight, 122 pounds. That's not one of the glamour weights. That's not one of the money divisions. It's only got money flowing through it now because of Inui. So why fuck up a good thing? Is that what the Americans would do? It isn't. But American fight fans like to hold American fighters and foreign fighters to a different standard, a double standard. An unreasonable one. That isn't going to affect Inui's drawing power anyway because he's not relying on them to put the money in his pocket. He's got enough people to put enough money in his pocket in his own neck of the woods. I propose that he stay there to stick it to them, to show them he doesn't need you. Your own fighters need you, and you're barely supporting them. So don't worry about Japan and Japanese fighters. They're doing all right. Without you.
At 43 years old, Guillermo Rigondeaux cooks in a way. I'm, I'm talking about cooks in a way, bro. Nah, nah, I'm, nah. I'm it's good. In a way, needs a tuna. He can't be fighting all these tough fights, moving up all these divisions. Uh, that's, tuna, that's, tuna my ass, man. Who, that's a good who, fight. Who, who, who you think he tuning up Guillermo Rigondeaux, bro? Hey, yo, you, you forgot You forgot who? a pot of grease fell on Guillermo. He went half blonde for half the year. Like, what is we talking about? Do you really think Stephen Fulton is better than Guillermo Rigondeaux? Do you really think his hey, whole on, sight man, is man, bad? Man. Is, is, is he man, good? Man, like, man, are we sure? Is he is doctor. he medically cleared? He, Has he been? Did he, he do? Bro, did he do any skin graft and surgery and shit like that? Did you know? Bare knuckle boxing. I think he's he did. Oof. The man was just training down in Miami with David, bro. Come on, dog. Look. I seen him teaching yeah. David, and I thought, oh, cool, <laughs> that's dope. Rigging down, sixty years old now. He 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 looking to pass the uh knowledge oh, down. Man. Do you remember what I told you a long time ago about how American fans will pretend? to be a fan of one fighter just to try and discredit another like they did many years ago with Guillermo Rigondeaux. Guillermo couldn't move the needle to save his life even when he was fighting for titles even when he was the man to beat at 122 pounds nobody cared I should say nobody watched him nobody really watched his fights nobody talked about him not up until he became an instrument a tool to be used against Vasil Lomachenko. That's right. right. A lot of guys, just like that caller, they pretended to be fans of Guillermo Rigondeau just to discredit Vasil Lomachenko. And we see how that played out. Now this caller wants to do the same thing with Guillermo and Dinui. Oh. oh, you think today's Guillermo Rigondeau would expose Naya Inoue like he exposed Casemiro? Did you even see that fight? He probably didn't if he's lucky, because that was by and large one of the worst fights I've seen in recent memory, if you even want to call it a fight. a fight. Guillermo was so determined to stay out of the pocket with John Real Casemiro, he didn't do anything. He just moved from one end of the ring to the other, taking a tour of the turnbuckles. I'd wager that he knew he does to him what he did to Paul Butler, because Paul Butler tried to do the same thing. Just moving around, not doing anything. Or what? What? Because you think at 42 or 43 years old, however old Guillermo is now, you think he has the same kind of speed as he knew he, the same reflexes as he knew he, or are you just pretending he does so you can have something to say, someone you can use to discredit he knew he. That's how much it eats Americans up. Do you think that guy even knows that Guillermo fought two times last year? Once against Jesus Martinez? Do you think he watched that fight? Then again, against Charlie and Dino. Do you think that caller even knows that Guillermo had two fights last year? Do you think he watched them? Because of what a big Guillermo Rigondeau fan he is. These people don't support anything or anyone and they will go as far as pretending to be a fan of a fighter they don't support and they don't watch just so that they can tear down another that is how fucking useless there's no other word for it because you don't support inui but you don't really support rigo either you just want to use him to tear the other guy down just to have something to say no matter how fucking stupid it sounds Are you serious and this is what the boxing community in america has become this is what you think he knew he should subject himself to Elsewhere in the world of boxing, Ryan Garcia, seemingly jubilant, vindicated, took to his social media and stated, A billionth of a gram found in my system. Bruh, you can't make this up. What, that you keep talking about a qualifiable substance like it's a quantifiable substance? New York State Athletic Commission resigns. Everyone's backtracking now. Stop messing with me. Defamation suits. All you fake-ass reporters like Dan Raphael and everyone else who tried to claim I cheated suck a huge one to the point you explode. What did Dan Raphael do to him? Report the facts. Report the facts as they are. Even if Ryan and his supporters don't want to hear it, some people do that. Even if you're in the clear for one drug, you're still on the hook for the other. You're not out of the woods. You want to convince people that you are. And he said that a high-ranking staff member at the New York State Athletic Commission just resigned. Where have I heard that before? In the midst of this high-profile anti-doping fiasco, it harkens back to another anti-doping fiasco we saw last year with Alicia Baumgartner and a different athletic commission, the Michigan Unarmed Combat Commission. What about it? Around that time, Linda Douglas, resigned from her position as the commission's athletic coordinator and longtime point of contact for promoters, promoters in the sport of boxing, right when this anti-doping fiasco kicked off. 
Alicia's anti-doping fiasco, and here we see that a high-ranking staff member in the New York State Athletic Commission just resigned. So what is the correlation between high-ranking staff members turning in their resignations at or around the time of a high-profile anti-doping case? What's going on here? Because we saw this last year, and we're seeing the same thing here and now. These are two different commissions, you understand. There's the Michigan Unarmed Combat Commission and the New York State Athletic Commission, but it's the same thing. Why? Is this just a coincidence? Because this is the second time we've seen this in the last 12 months. What's the connection here? Because I feel like there is one. Attitudes towards Alicia Baumgartner's anti-doping fiasco varied from person to person. It all depended on who you asked whether or not they thought she was innocent or guilty. I chose to take a more transparent approach. What? I don't care if she is innocent or guilty because she's fucking hot. Look at her. The woman is gorgeous and the sport of boxing is rife with anti-doping fiascos. So who really fucking cares? I'm gonna watch her anyway because she's fucking hot. Right? So I can only deduce that whenever these outraged individuals try to give me a piece of their mind due to Ryan's situation is because they're using that hierarchy of thought on him. They don't want me pointing out the facts and they don't want me talking about it because they think he's hot. Wait, they want you to treat his situation the way you treated hers? More or less. The problem with that is I don't think Ryan Garcia is hot. I'm not into guys. Maybe you are. Why the fuck would I keep the same energy for an attractive woman for a man? I'm not attracted to men. You are. And that's why you want me to be nicer to him. You want me to explain it away and cook up conspiracy theories for him? I can't even report the story the way it is just sticking to the facts because of if I do, you get upset. Neither can Dan Raphael. Why do you think Ryan Garcia took shots at him? Dan hasn't made any partial statements, you understand. He's making statements of fact in reference to the story. But because he is and because he's not being, I don't know, nicer about it, Ryan is upset. But it's just a matter of fact that Osterin is a qualifiable substance, not a quantifiable substance. So even if it is a billionth of a gram, it's still a billionth of a gram that isn't supposed to be there. How do you want him to say it? If Ryan's contention is that it came from contention contaminated supplements, prove it. They're acting like this guy finds himself in this situation because of some guilt that I assigned to something I said, something I think. This is the situation that he's in whether you like it or not. I don't even expect the punishment to be very harsh. At the very worst, he'll get a six-month suspension provided he cooperates with some anti-doping protocol and he'll be back before you know it on the same schedule that he would have been had none of this happened. And lastly, I've noticed this whole show, we've had a kind of tap dance, like allegedly, if, if things come out. I'm gonna say it outright. I think Ryan Garcia cheated, bro. I think you took the steroids and you knew to, you took the steroids, all right? I'm gonna stop, like, uh, with this, if, if that, if this, bro. I'm tired of all this crap. At the highest level, especially, man, when everybody's looking at this fight, we just gave a boxing its millionth black eye here. A lot of people left me a lot of angry comments in my previous video when all I made were statements of fact. Fuck! He's still on the hook for the Osterin, though I don't even expect the punishment to be all that harsh, that at the very worst, He'll be suspended for a few months, no longer than it would have taken him to schedule his next fight. Which is like no suspension at all, because since when in a sport of boxing have the penalties for doping been all that harsh? When has that ever been the case? But don't expect me to step on eggshells to make you feel better. You freaks and geeks and incels. You're just going off of whatever Ryan's telling you for no reason other than you like Ryan. What, you want me to like him too? The whether or not you like Ryan Garcia, liking Ryan Garcia is not the subject here. The subject is, can he prove his innocence? Will he? And if he can't, what's gonna happen? Fear not. There are plenty of people out there that tested positive for more banned substances, more times, than Ryan Garcia. This is hardly the most egregious anti-doping fiasco I've ever seen. This is just one, one among many. And at the very worst, he'll get a couple of months suspended and he'll be back before you know it. So quit your fucking crying. What do you want to suck his dick? My, my guavo. In men's middleweight news, more details in association with former WBC middleweight champion Jermall Charlo's recent arrest Prior to his arrest on Monday, Jermall Charlo was also arrested in April and is due to appear in court on May 20th charged with injury to a child and intention to cause bodily injury and driving with a previously suspended license. A kid. Following Monday's new arrest, 
Charlo is also now facing charges of driving while intoxicated, fleeing a police officer, and leaving the scene of a crash. On the heels of this latest arrest, the World Boxing Council has finally decided to alleviate Jermall Charlo of his middleweight champion status. It took them long enough, and we'll talk about that in another video. I just can't get over how these fucking degenerates, these fucking scumbags like Jermall Charlo, are more revered in the American boxing scene, more talked up and propped up than the guys that are actually getting out there and getting shit done prayers for charlo don't kick him when he's down what about his mental health what about it what about it this is a guy who something like two or three years ago assaulted a waitress isn't he same guy now he's set to be charged later on this month with injury to a child his brother jermel he's cut from the same cloth this is the guy who a few months ago was bragging about beating up on his girlfriend and the only reason the boxing community at large found out about it is because he was stupid enough to brag. He told somebody and he was bragging about it. How he slapped her up for acting tough. They recorded him and he must have been none the wiser. That's the only reason that audio saw the light of day. Javante likes slapping up broads too. The little garden gnome. So what is it about Americans and their fixation on what are these degenerate and toxic and individuals these fucking scumbags what is it who's raising these pieces of shit and how is it that these pieces of shit endear themselves to the boxing community at large here in america more than the actual boxers doing the actual boxing and getting shit done i mean in the last five years i've seen so many americans tear down a terence crawford who was already accomplished before he fought errol spence jr in fact he was already more accomplished then Errol Spence Jr. But it was Errol who they loved. Errol who got behind the wheel of a vehicle, endangering other motorists. Because he was drunk. Flip that Ferrari. That's the guy who they identify with. That's the guy they like. That's the guy who they propped up. And that's the guy who got his fucking ass kicked. But even now they try to prop him up. Even now they try to defend him. Why? Because birds of a feather flock together. Those guys are a bunch of fucking scumbags. The people that prop them up and look the other way, no matter what degenerate behavior they engage in, they're scumbags too. They're degenerates. That's what it is. The piece of shit they see in them, they also see in themselves. Just pieces of shit on top of pieces of shit. That's all it is. I wouldn't argue with one of these guys. For what? There is no better nature to appeal to. We're not on the same wavelength. While there has never been any shortage of bad boys and rebellious characters in the sport of boxing from Roberto Duran to Mike Tyson. At least they got shit done. Piece of shit like Jermall Charlo gets to hang on to a world title for three years without defending it. What on earth provided him with that kind of amnesty? What? Mental health? Mental health? What mental health issues has he been diagnosed with? What's the pathology? Schizophrenia? Bipolar disorder? Is he manic? What? What is it? Because near as I can tell, he's just a substance abuser. He's just a fucking junkie. In a sport where they tell the athletes that they are responsible for whatever they put into their bodies, how does that not apply to him? What, he gets to be a booze hound because of his mental health? What's he been diagnosed with that we're supposed to feel sorry for him? The silver lining is, he's not a champion anymore, and we've no reason to keep talking about this fucking scrub. Good riddance.